Hey guys, my name is Pastor Paul and coming at you right now are some words on worship. Have you ever wondered why we sing the songs that we do in church? Why do we sing these songs and not those songs? What is it about the ones that we sing that we use them and not others? Well, I actually have five guidelines that I try to use when choosing songs for us to sing on Sunday morning. These aren't hard and fast rules. Some songs don't quite fit into each of the guidelines, but most of them do. And really, this is driven by the idea that I think some songs are really good for us to sing together as a congregation, and some songs aren't. I don't want you to hear me say that they're bad songs. In fact, they could be really, really good songs for us to hear on the radio or sing in the car or for a soloist to sing on a Sunday morning. But there's just something about them that makes them less than great for what we're trying to do on a Sunday morning. So over the next couple of videos, I wanna share with you my five guidelines for choosing worship songs. The first one is that I wanna make sure that the song is singable for the average churchgoer. The people who write and produce worship songs are professionals. They're professional musicians with professional backup singers and professional sound engineers. And I'm so thankful that they produce high quality worshipful music, but often their professionalism leads them to write songs that average people just can't sing. Whether a song is too high or has a melody line that's too complicated, some songs that are rock solid in so many other areas are just too hard to sing. My goal as the worship pastor is to give us, as the whole congregation, the opportunity every week to sing songs of praise and remembrance to our God. And if the songs are unsingable, it's hard for us to do this in a way that's meaningful. So when I choose songs, I really want them to be singable for average people. My second guideline is kind of similar to the first. I want the songs that we do to be playable for our current band. Some modern worship songs use heavily synthesized instruments or other special techniques to produce the cool sounds that make the songs really awesome. Right now, our church's band just doesn't have the ability to produce some of these sounds. Maybe in the future we will, but right now we don't. And that means that if we were to try to play some of these songs, it will most likely end up sounding kind of bad, which would distract you, the congregation, and us, the musicians, from worshiping well. So when I choose songs for us to sing together as a congregation, I wanna make sure that the band can play it. And again, just because a song has a complex vocal line or a crazy cool synthesized instruments doesn't mean it's a bad song. In fact, it could be a really great song that ministers to our souls. What I'm saying is that when I choose songs for us to sing together as a church, I wanna make sure that normal people can sing them and that the band can play them. Just some words on worship for you to think about today. Be blessed, friends.